Hello and welcome to Kiwi Rider Podcast. My name is Ray Heron. Great to have you along. If this is the first podcast of ours you've listened to, please do hit that subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening to us on. If you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts, leave a review. That'd be awesome because it helps other people find the podcast. This is New Zealand's own motorcycling podcast made by Kiwi Riders for Kiwi Riders. That is what we do. We ride bikes. We talk about bikes. We eat, breathe and live bikes. And I've ruined my bike. (laughs) I've broken it, and I will tell you more about that later in the podcast. But Matthew Day Gillett has been out and about, so let's catch up with him. Well, g'day, how you going? <laughs> Good, thanks, man. Um, yeah, not bad yourself. Yeah, getting there, getting there. It's been a weekend of interesting trials and tribulations. Um, I snapped a bolt on the T7. Yeah, what? Why were you even playing with bolts on that? Um, so, as you know, I cracked one of the fairings. I've got a new set of fairings coming for the bike, and uh, I was like, well, I'm going to have to take the bars off to get the fairings off, so I might as well have a crack at getting the the bars off. And so, because I put the bars on, I figured I wouldn't have too much trouble getting them off, but of course I put them on, not necessarily using any grease or anything like that. And there's a couple of bolts that replace the factory bolts that go frame to uh, engine head and oh. <laughs> then the, the bars, you replace that, they, they go uh, bars, frame, engine head, and they'd been in there for the best part of 40,000 Ks with many heat cycles and no um, no grease or like anything. Like proper grease or whatever. So one of them was very, very tight getting off, uh, but I did get that off, and the second one on the left-hand side of the engine, uh, it, felt very, it felt a lot looser to begin with, and I started undoing it, and then it went very loose. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, snapped it. <laughs> snapped it off. Uh, so, luckily, I've got the Motor Marini in the garage, which I'm going to be riding for the next well, the foreseeable future. Uh, I'm going to have to take the um, Tenere into the shop to uh, to get looked at. Uh, but it's getting suspension done at some stage, so it can all get done at the same time. Nice. Well, not Hopefully. nice that you can't ride it currently, but... Yeah, the Motor Marini will get a nice good look in. So that's my trials and tribulations. You have been riding this weekend up to Auckland for the uh, New Zealand National Motorcycle Show. Yeah, so that was um, interesting trials and tribulations. So I held off. I didn't go yesterday because the weather was quite rubbish. Yesterday being so. Um, And the forecast for today was beautiful sunshine from Cambridge all the way to Auckland. And when I got on the bike, um, it was all right. As soon as I left Cambridge, it turned absolute custard and it basically rained the entire way up to Auckland. Um, and yeah, so I was there wearing my new um, Moto Dry vintage textile jacket, um, which is actually quite watertight, I found. I was quite pleased with that. But I was also wearing my Kevlar jeans, which got soaked all the way through. Um, so yeah, I got to the motorcycle show looking like I'd pissed myself. Um, which is just how you want to arrive at an event with quite a few people there. Um, and yeah, it was an interesting experience, an interesting day. Um, a lot of cool stuff to see at that show, like in terms of people's bikes, like their prides and joy, um, like some custom bikes. There was some bikes that had had ludicrous m- amounts of money on them, mostly like Harley V rods. You know how there's that sort of custom um whole scene around the v rods there was quite a few there Um, one looked like it had like gold plating and stuff um two britons on display um including the one that andrew stroud actually rode which was quite cool to get up and close and like they didn't have a sign saying do not touch but (laughs) uh, it was yeah very reverent sort of space um and yeah there was some stunt shows um which i took a little bit in but once you've seen a guy do a wheelie up and down a car park you've kind of seen them all do a wheelie up and down a car park if you know what i mean um and yeah a few new bikes there it was wasn't as many as i was hoping there was um benelli and royal enfield i got to see the new super meteor in the flesh and that is a very cool bike i even got to sit on it uh it fits very nicely um so there's going to be a few lunar approved cruiser makers um that are going to really have to watch out for that bike because it's got a lot going for it. Um, so, yeah, Benelli, Royal Enfield, BMW were there with brand new bikes as well. 
and Auckland Harley Davidson were there with a whole lot of bikes, including a Pan America, which all of a sudden looks a lot smaller than I remember it being. Yeah, it was it was a big tank before we uh, before we got to ride it, and then it, it seems to be getting smaller over the years. Yeah, it was really really strange looking at, and I rode the Moto Marini up, of course. So I rode the X Cape up. It's now. Uh, at 970 kilometers on the odometer, so it's basically ready for its first service. Um, and yeah, I was sort of got off that, and that's a what 650 twin. Looked at the Pan America, and I was like, that's shrunk in the wash, but <laughs> <laughs> um, shrunk in the wash. That's funny, yeah. The whole it's like its shirt's shrunk in the wash, the engine still looks huge, but it's like everything else around it's like smaller. Well, smaller than I remember it anyway. I haven't been up close to a Pan America in quite a while. But, yeah, um, pretty awesome show. Um, what else can I say about it? Lots of food vendors, uh, some live bands. R- really a lot of people there considering that today was also the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride and the weather in Auckland was just as horrendous as it was down here in the Waikato. So there was a lot of people braving the elements and... It was quite cool. The other thing that was the other thing that was on also was the uh, the boat show in Auckland, which uh, to people not like you and I, Matt, that the kind of live and breathe motorcycling. Um, you know, some people use the disposable income on a motorcycle and a boat, so I can imagine it being a tough call. Oh, do I go to the boat show or the bike show? Yeah, well, like the boat show's also got all the fishing stuff as well. Like, if, if I'd known, I might have actually gone and had a look, but I didn't realize the boat show was on today as well. Um, yeah, there's a lot of events competing for your time and effort basically this weekend. Um, yeah, I think for a, a community run event, so it's, well, it's, no, it's run by, uh, Premier Events. There we go. So the New Zealand Motorcycle Show is run by Premier Events. Um, but it's on behalf of, I believe it's the Papakura Rotary Club. Um, so proceeds go to charity and everything. So for, Considering it's, we're on the cusp of winter, which I don't know to you, but when I think of motorcycling, I don't particularly think of riding in the rain in the winter. I think of riding in the summer and lovely warm out there, wind in your hair. Um, so I think it's, it's an odd time of year to try and have a motorcycle show. You've got a lot going against you. And they also didn't seem to have the support that I would have expected from the wider motorcycle um industry so like i said there was you were saying before we got on on air there was no distributors or anything there so the uh, in terms of distributors you had urban moto imports who are benelli and royal enfield you had bmw motorrad new zealand which is Syme derby uh, the importers there you had for cedar who are a gear distributor and a couple of other small um distributors so um the new distributor of macna gear was there um but yeah, other than that, and Auckland Harley Davidson being there by themselves, not actual Harley Davidson Australia, there yeah wasn't really like as much gear as I would have hoped to have seen, like gear vendors. Um, there was a lot of interesting vendors there of all sorts of quirky things. Like there were a few little electric pit bikes that had a big display there. Um, lots of <laughs> one thing that blew me away was there was a supercharger vendor that had a supercharged, I think it was a supercharged Bonneville or a Speed Twin and a supercharged um, Rocket 3 because the Rocket 3, of course, needs more power. <laughs> so there was some really interesting stuff there. A little bit disappointing on in that aspect that there wasn't really, there was a huge community, like all the clubs, um, there were heaps of Italian motorcycles there. Um, Vincent's, like there was a whole row of, um, classic Vincent motorcycles, a whole grouping of these very special um, Triumph triples that were made for specifically for the US market. And there would have been about five or six of them sitting there. Beautiful orange, very different looking motorcycles, those. Um, a lot of cool stuff. MTF Finance had a big stand there. Ride Forever were there. Um, but yeah, I, it would have been nice to see more motorcycle distributors there with new bikes. Would have been cool to see more gear. Interesting that the big three weren't there. You know, Forbes and Davies, Whites and Darbies. You would think that they would be there hocking off the, the quad lock, the former, the um, Whites branded stuff. Yeah. I got to say, though, like before we came on um, 
and started recording this, we were, I was talking to our mate Mike Ireland, who went yesterday in the pouring rain, and he heard, um, and I've got no way of verifying this, I've literally come home, put the kids to bed, and now we're talking. Um, he was saying that it was a space constraint, and a lot of manufacturers or distributors this year sort of said they were going to take a break because there wasn't the space to do what they wanted, which could very well be true. Uh, it's held at the Trust Serena at, in Henderson, and there was like a decent amount of space sort of there, like good spacing in between bikes and that, but you could have definitely crammed a few more um, vendors and that in there if um, you really wanted to. Mm. Interesting. So that's the, uh, what is that, the New Zealand National Motorcycle Show, which I find an interesting title for a, a bike show in Auckland. I think they only call it NZ Motorcycle Show, but yeah, that's biggest well one of the biggest if the only motorcycle show in new zealand really i haven't really heard of any others um but yeah there are a lot of bikes on the road today as well a lot of people going up obviously the dgr was on as well um so a lot of people as i was leaving were rolling up in their tweed and they're um on their very special old bikes so it was a very cool event it's just yeah next year i hope there's going to be a bit more support from the industry Time now to take a look at the top five brought to you by Protector Insurance. It's motorcycle insurance by motorcyclists for motorcyclists. If you are the type to put your motorcycle away over the colder months, here are five things, the top five things you should do before locking it up in the shed. Uh, If you want to know more about Protector Insurance's options, make sure that you're on the best possible deal. Go to protector.co.nz. Number five on the top five things you should do with your motorcycle before you put it away for the winter is fill up the fuel tank. It stands to reason that a full tank of gas leaves no room or less room for air and water. That means condensation. Your tank is less likely to go rusty. Plus, when you get it out of the shed again in spring, you are good to go. Number four on the top five things you should do to your motorcycle before you put it away for the winter months. When you fill up that fuel tank, put in a bottle of fuel stabiliser. This, uh, when you've got a full tank, um, it uh, will help prevent the fuel going bad from age because fuel doesn't actually last as long as you think it does i thought it had a you know a good six month shelf life if not longer but no it's a it's not actually that long after even a month it's going it's starting to go bad number three on the top five things you should do to your motorcycle before you put it away for the winter month thank you very much to protector insurance is grab yourself some after watch wash prep like fs 360 or something like that after you give your bike its final wash dry it off and then cover the bike in that stuff it'll form a barrier that will help fight corrosion as well as making it easier to clean next time you do so uh also you can cover all those rubber hoses and electrical wires in silicon spray it'll keep them nice and supple and stop them going hard and crap Tracking. Number two on the top five things you should do to your motorcycle before you put it away for the winter months. Uh, do all the standard maintenance that you would do during a riding season, like your ear filter, your oil filter, you change your oil, and do that before you park it up. That way it's good to go when you do decide to get it out uh, when the weather is warm enough. And number one, the top one thing on the top list of five things you should do, should, should do on your motorcycle before you put it away for the winter months, if you can, get your bike off the ground. When you park it up, in the garage or in the shed or wherever you park it up park it up on some old carpet or better yet get uh, front and rear paddock stands so the tyres don't develop flat spots. Another way you can prevent this is regularly moving your bike around the place but that's kind of a pain in the bum. Another benefit of getting it off the ground though is that the tyres go through less heat cycles they don't particularly like being cold Uh, this helps to aid or prevent, it it aids in preventing uh, cracks forming in your tyres. The ground is, is cold and it's going to wick away any temperature that uh, you know ambient temperature that your tires do get and rubber likes to stay between 15 and 25 degrees so get your bike off the ground or put it on some carpet if at all possible that's your top five the top five tips for keeping your motorcycle good during the winter storage months thank you very much to protector insurance cover all sorts of motorcycles they do uh, they'll even uh, sort you out for cover on your gear and you may be eligible for track day cover head to protector.co.nz and do their online tool to see what kind of deal you could get on your insurance uh, thank you very much very much protector insurance for sponsoring the top five in this week's episode of kiwi rider podcast
And I mentioned earlier on in the podcast, yes, I've ruined my bike, the Tenere 700. So I, I talked a few episodes ago about how it fell off the hydraulic stand and punctured a hole in the fairing. Nice big crack up the side of the fairing. So I sourced some new fairings, and uh, at great expense, I might add. It seems that that's how Yamaha make their money, cheap bikes and expensive parts. So I... Um, I saw some new fairings. They haven't arrived yet, but they're on a slow boat from Japan. And while they are taking their time to arrive, I thought, well, I better take the cage off because that's been on there the best part of 40,000 Ks in three years. And I'm going to have to take that off to do the fairings anyway. So I got to work taking the fairing, uh, to taking the cage off. And the bolts that were holding the cage on were quite tight. Specifically, two bolts, one on either side of the cage that go through the frame and into the engine. I managed to get one off. And the other one turned surprisingly easy in comparison, but I got maybe half a turn out of it and then it snapped. So now I have a snapped bolt inside the uh, what is essentially the head of the engine, uh, which I need to get uh, someone else with more skills to, uh, to remove for me. Uh, so an update on the suspension, though. We are waiting for that job to be done, but the componentry has arrived. I have the new cartridges for the front and the whole new shock for the rear, and we're going to be talking to the team at RS Motorcycles in a future episode about uh, about what is happening there. But um, that's your update. So don't over-talk your bolts, and when you are putting bolts especially into the engine, probably a good idea to use some, some copper lube, some copper... Um, uh, copper grease or something to uh, to make me removing those bolts a little bit easier. I should have expected it though with so many heat cycles. So uh, that's a bit disappointing, but um, them is the brakes, I guess. Anyway, that about wraps up the show this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, great to have you along. If you like this episode or you don't, love to hear your feedback. Email us, podcast at kiwirider.co.nz. We're on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok under the name Kiwi Rider. MotoNZ.com is my uh, my website, and I'm on YouTube under MotoNZ. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers. I feel like I've been saying that for months, but we are so close. And Matthew Day Gillett's channel uh, on throttle, his website on throttle.co.nz, and the YouTube channel on throttle. He has hit a thousand subscribers, and why does hitting a thousand subscribers matter? Not because we really want the following, but um, although we do love sharing our content with people, it means that once we hit a thousand subscribers, uh, the ads that YouTube puts on our videos, we actually get a cut off. So if you haven't already, hit to, hit to YouTube, hit subscribe on uh, On Throttle's channel and Moto NZ's channel. That would be fantastic. Otherwise, I've been Ray, this is Kiwi Rider Podcast, keep the rubber side down, throttle on, and we'll catch you in seven days' time.